Hello I'm Sketches and Scrubs, thank you so much for tuning into my video. I make weekly art tutorials, paint alongs and vlogs and today we're going to paint this beautiful loose watercolour bouquet. It's kind of an in-between tutorial slash paint along so although it's not real time I do encourage you guys to try and paint along, pause when you need to because not only is it relaxing but it means that you'll end up with beautiful results at the end. Here are some timestamps in case you want to jump to particular parts. You will need some watercolour paint. I use the Winsor & Newton Cotman set. I link everything I use and alternatives down below, but I also made a past video with more ideas if you need that. You'll need some watercolour paper, watercolour paint brush, some water, a paint palette and some tissue to just dab off the excess water. I thought it might be helpful to show you the basics of what I do when I'm painting a rose. So I'm making this crescent shape in different sizes. I start off as you can see with the arrow going to either the left or the right and then I add more on the outside and then I add even more on the outside getting kind of using the belly of the brush more. The pink lines are kind of representing when I'm not necessarily picking up colour from the palette I'm just using water to spread the paint around to make the edges looser and wet. Now naturally all flowers won't be pointing in the same direction so starting from left to right you can see that the first one is facing forward, the second one is facing down towards the left hand side and then the third one is pointing upwards towards the right and what those dots are representing is essentially the centre so where you start with the smallest crescent shapes and then gradually get bigger as you go further out and what the roses that I've painted below demonstrate is essentially what those flowers would look like depending on which direction they're pointing in. So you can see that the centers are different and combining this with different sizes and different directions really gives you a fuller bouquet. Now that we've done that, pick your color palettes. I'm actually only going to use primarily three colors for this, which are on the side. Now that we have the basics down, let's actually start painting. So as you can see, I started doing the small crescent shapes again, and then gradually as I'm getting out, I'm using more of the belly of the brush to add bigger strokes and make bigger petals. As you may have noticed in my previous sketch as well, I like to make the centers a bit darker and a bit more defined, so that's what I'm going back and doing there now. I'm using a limited colour palette of violet, yellow and Payne's grey. So most of the variation or the interest from this piece is going to come from, yes, the composition, but also the florals that I'm choosing to use. I'm using the Cotman 45 Studio Pan Set, which I'll leave a link to down below. And I've also done a review on it because you get 45 stunning colours um, that you can mix and use as you wish. So as well as putting roses and putting five petal flower that you're seeing here, I'm adding some buds and then I'm going to add some peonies as well. As I'm painting buds, which as you know symbolise new growth, I want to take a moment to thank all my subscribers who've subscribed to my new channel. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you. I appreciate your encouragement, your comments, your kind words. I read it all. It makes such a huge difference to me and to my channel to know that I'm making something helpful um, and it really does encourage me. So thank you so much. If you haven't subscribed already and you find my videos useful, then please do so that you can catch them every week. This peony is painting downwards. So to paint it, I actually paint almost like an upside down cup with each stroke being distinct. Then to paint the bottom of the flower, which at the moment is pointing upwards, I do small spikes. And to paint the other side or to close the cup, I just add individual crescents to the bottom. And to paint buds, I almost do like an oval shape without the oval being completely filled in. So it shows that actually there are individual petals. To be honest, before I started a YouTube channel, I never really commented much on YouTube. I didn't really message because it almost felt like the people weren't real. But I know that doesn't make sense, but I am real. I do read every single comment, I do take all your suggestions on board. So yeah, get in touch, especially if you took the time to follow this tutorial slash paint along. 
adding my leaves and as you can see from what I'm doing I tend to just use the belly of the brush paint one side of the leaf and then the belly of the brush to paint the other side some people like to draw the outline and then fill it in that's okay too just do whatever you like because it's loose it doesn't have to be perfect or completely symmetrical that is not the point of loose florals I don't think you can have completely perfect loose florals and that is why I find them so relaxing to do because you can't really fail at them or at least I haven't seen I've seen pieces that I don't like as much that I have done but I've never been like oh no this is completely terrible because you can't really fail like it defies the point so yeah I'm using Payne's grey and added I think a, a touch of green to make this color and it's kind of dark I know it's it's quite cool so I think it, it balances out the piece it's a limited color palette but it does kind of draw interest I use the leaves to fill in the gaps and I tend to go back and forth so I'll fill in an area to a certain degree then I'll go to a different part of the painting and add more leaves there to keep the whole thing kind of balanced and to make sure that I don't overdo just one side or over focus on one side. You'll notice not all the leaves are all the same shape, some are bigger than others, some are more round, some are quite small and added to a stem and all that is okay, all that kind of adds a bit of difference and a bit of contrast. For finishing touches I step back and look at the painting and see what's missing. Sometimes that means filling in a gap like I did there, sometimes it means adding a bit of colour to the flowers themselves to just tie the whole thing together or adding a few extra leaves. And then once I'm happy that completes the piece. The good thing about having a limited colour palette is that you can do the same or similar to kind of add other pieces to tie in together. So these are the other two that I did with a similar colour palette that I will be making available on my Etsy very shortly. Let me know if a video on floral compositions is something that you think you'd be interested in down below in the comment. A for effort for making it this far into the video. Thank you so much for tuning in and watching this video. I hope that you found it useful and that you enjoyed it. Tag me on at sketches and scrubs on Instagram if you did paint along. See you next week. Bye!